a staghorn fern and I'm gonna show you how I do it. So let's jump into it. So a few weeks ago, I decided to mount a couple of ferns and put them on my wall. Um, I don't have the best picture, but I will pop it up on here for you so you can see it. And I instantly fell in love and had this vision of having all of these epiphyte, epiphytic, I think I'm saying that right, plants mounted on my wall in my living room. And I don't know, it's just like giving me life. <laughs> I don't know if that saying is popular anymore, but honestly, that's how I felt. Um, I wanted to have like different sizes and just have this, you know, almost collection of, I guess what people, <laughs> I think the idea originated from someone who, you know, instead of hunting animals and having animal heads up on the wall, um, it's kind of, you know, it's a play on having mounted, prized, I don't know <laughs> what word I'm trying to say, but like, you know, you, you know, like when people who hunt and they have the deer heads like on their wall. So I think it's like the same concept, um, but doing it with epiphytic, with epiphyte plants. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But anyway, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, I did a crocodile fern and I did a juvenile staghorn fern. I actually ended up taking those to a pop-up that I did over the weekend and they sold <laughs> both of them. And so now my wall is bare and I'm sad, but um, it gives me the opportunity to create more of these plants um, and have them on my wall and enjoy them until I pass them along to the next owner. Um, yeah, and so I went out to a nursery, a local nursery, and I actually found this mammoth behind me. This is a whole heck of a lot more mature than uh, the, the one that I had. And so I can just imagine, this one's already got the splits in the, um, in the I think these are called, I don't know what these are called, fronds maybe, I'm not sure. I'm not, I love ferns, but I don't know their anatomy well. So, but they already have like the telltale like stag, like look and I think there's maybe two or three I know there's definitely two there might be three in here and so I might be able to get more out of this pot than this because I think honestly I think that's like way too much to do that in one in my opinion I don't know we'll see when we go to do it but yes so I wanted to go ahead and do this with you all today um yeah and so let's jump right into it let's do it let's uh let's mount a fern let's mount a stag today So the supplies that you are going to need for this project is you're going to want to have a piece of wood. I actually chose cedar because it is less likely to rot. And I was actually able to find what is called cedar cookies on Facebook Marketplace for fairly cheap. You're also going to want to go ahead and put your hanging materials already on your wood before you start this project. I actually chose picture hanging wire and loops for mine. You're going to want moistened sphagnum moss, nails and a hammer, and fishing line. I actually ended up using 30 pound fishing line and 10 pound fishing line, but that's because I wanted extra security when using the fishing line. So that is totally optional. And of course a fern of choice. But since this video is about a staghorn, I'm pretty sure that that's the plant that you picked today. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is take your fern out of the pot and loosen up the root ball a little bit. Now for me, because I know that there were at least two in this pot, possibly three, I know that I wanted to separate mine. And so it took me a little while to try to dig through those roots and, and figure out the separation point. For me, anytime I've done this before, I always try to pick a moment where the plant is not too wet, but also not too dry. Unfortunately, <laughs> this guy was super dry and it took me a really long time to try to even like loosen up those roots. So after a while of struggling and trying to figure out where a good separation point was for this guy, I was getting concerned and I didn't want to cause any additional stress to the plant. So I decided to take it outside and moisten up the root ball a little bit. Hopefully this is not something that you will have to experience, but if your plant is really on the dry side and you're having a hard time separating it um, or even opening up the root ball a little bit, you might want to give it a, a little bit of water to uh, help with that process. After that, I was able to separate it into two. However, there were three in the pot, but they were so closely compacted together that I was afraid to separate them further. So I'm really happy that I was able to just get the two of them separated. And I'm okay with that because I didn't want to cause any more harm or stress to this plant. Um, ultimately, the care of the plant and the health of the plant is my long-term goal. I don't want to cause 
any more stress. I probably could have gotten the additional one out, but again, I didn't want to do it. So now that I have them separated and ready to be mounted, I'm going to lay down a layer of sphagnum moss where I want the plant to be on my wood. I'm also keeping in mind where the wire is located on the back of the board so that when I mount the plant, I'm not mounting it crooked. And when I go to put it up on the wall, it's going to be straight and how I like it. Next, you're going to put the plant onto your board. Once you have it laid out and adjusted how you like, at this point, I'm going to take the nails and I'm going to hammer them all around the root ball. After I have that done, then I started layering on more sphagnum moss. So I want to make sure that the root ball is completely covered with moistened sphagnum moss. After you have all that set, then the balancing act happens. <laughs> You're going to actually tie a piece of fishing line at the top. I chose to do it at the top. I mean, you can shoot, you can do it wherever you want to, but for me, I just felt like it was easier to do it at the top. Once you have your knot tied, then you're just gonna take your fishing line and crisscross it back and forth, looping it around each nail, and then back across the root ball over and over again until you've hit every nail that you have, but feel free to do it more than once. I actually did one layer of 30 pound fishing line and because I was not 100% convinced that it felt super secure on there, I decided to go back in with eight pound fishing line and do a second layer. Plus that also gave me the opportunity to add any more moss around that moss ball where I may feel like pieces had fallen off or just didn't have the coverage that I felt like it needed. That part's totally optional. A lot of people do this with just one fishing line. And then once that's done, if you want to take it one step further, like I did, again, I just wanted to be completely sure that this guy was mounted. This was also two plants on a piece of wood. So I felt like it was kind of heavy. I do think the fact that that root ball was extra saturated where I had taken it outside to try to separate it played into the weight of this plant. I don't think that's normally how it's going to be. Um, but I went in with a staple gun and just a few spots where it felt like it might have been a little loose. Um, I just went ahead and stapled that in to secure it even more. <laughs> You're done. It's that easy. Um, depending on how moistened your plant is, you may want to give it a little water, especially with Super Thrive. I highly recommend that. That will help prevent transplant shock. But honestly, these guys are thriving. I swear that staghorn ferns are the most tough ferns I have ever seen in my entire life. They can, they can really handle an underwatering. They can handle an overwatering. Like what I did to these guys today is honestly a testament of how strong these plants are. Now, if you notice any dirt on the antler fronds, I recommend taking a light little makeup brush and just dusting that dirt off. You want to touch the antler fronds as little as possible. The oils in our hands can actually be harmful to those fronds. So the less amount of human touching they get, the happier they will be. A lot of these ferns can live in pots for years and be just fine. But if you want to see them thrive and be the happiest they can possibly be, mimicking their natural growth patterns and habitat is how you're going to achieve that. It's also a really fun way to add life and texture to your home decor. Not to mention it adds more floor space for more plants. So I just wanna to quickly touch on the care for these guys. The care is just as easy as it was to mount this guy. So once a week to a week and a half, depending on your home environment, you're gonna to wanna to take this baby off the wall and give it a good thorough watering. I test to see if my plants are ready for water by feeling their moss ball. If it's crunchy or hard, then I know it needs a good water, but also being aware to what your plants are saying to us. If they're looking a little droopy or a little sad, then you know they need a good watering. Make sure that you're fertilizing them at least once a month in the growing season. And then of course, these guys like humidity. So if you can't offer humidity with a humidifier, consider misting them with water once a day. You can also add some Super Thrive to offer some extra nutrients. These guys are epiphytes. They get their nutrition through the water in the air and they take that in through their antler fronds. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful and I hope that you found inspiration to mount your own fern. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I will do my very best to answer them for you. Don't forget to give yourself some love this week and of course, buy yourself a plant. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Did you like being a guest? Did you like being a guest on today?